Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we are gonna do something super cool with Mapbox's built-in functionalities for the vector layer visualizers. We are going to add some points of interest and then create a prefab from those. And I know you're thinking, is this witchcraft? No, it's Mapbox magic. So here's what we're gonna do. If you think about other location-based games, most of them have some kind of reward system for walking around. And we, being the sensitive, awesome people that we are, want people to go enjoy nature and take a look at parks. So we as game designers are going to build it into our game so that there's a reward system for at least getting close to some grass. Typically, when you see a game do something like this, they'll reward players with experience or items or both. We're just going to stick with experience and we're going to make it simple. So the first thing we need to do is decide what are we doing? Well, like I said, adding experience. So how do we want to represent that? We could have a super awesome model or a great object to use to represent that, have something you could spin. But for the sake of keeping it easy, let's just add some text to our game. We'll start by right clicking in our hierarchy and we'll just create a brand new 3D object and we're going to set up some 3D text. I'm going to go ahead and name this POI XP bonus. Spelled correctly without that extra E. So let's zoom in and take a look at our text. Right now it just says hello world. And that is absolutely not what we're going for. So let's change the text to just say XP. We'll keep it simple. And we want our text to match our UI and the styles that we're using. So let's right click this little circle next to the font in the text mesh. And we're going to change this to digit alt. Then we want to go ahead and update our anchor to the middle center so that it's anchored right there in the middle and then change the alignment to center as well so that everything's nice and centralized right there for us. This font size is also ridiculously small. Our players are never going to see that. So let's bump it up to something extreme, like 124. And right now, since we can't really see this in our game window, we're going to move it to 000. So it's just right here on top of our player, and we can get some kind of sense of scale. Let's drag it up a bit. And that should be plenty visible, I would think. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good size. That it's clearly visible. It's about as big as our player is in terms of like height. So we'll call it good with those settings right now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drag this down into our prefabs. So let's open up our models folder. And I'm going to shrink all these just to keep it cleaner. And I'm going to create a new folder as a subfolder of the models. And I'm going to call this field objects. And this is where we're going to put things like collectibles. And then I'm going to grab this, the POI XP bonus out of the hierarchy and drag it down into the field objects so that it becomes a prefab. And I'll go ahead and delete it. Perfect. Now let's drag this on here just to make sure it's okay. Awesome. And let's press play. This is cool and all, but it's kind of boring, right? I mean, just looking at this XP thing. So instead, why don't we do something cooler? Let's stop running this. And we're going to give our text a little bit of life. We'll do that with a script. So let's right click this field objects and create a folder. And I could have done that to start with, but I kind of wanted to show you how my process normally goes. And we're going to create a folder called POI XP bonus. Just like the prefab, we're going to drag it in there. 
And then I'm going to add a script in here. So right click that folder we just created and say create new C sharp script. And I'm going to call this script float and rotate. Double click the float and rotate script that you just added to open it up in your IDE. Now the point of this script is to make our text kind of jump up and down a little bit. I guess maybe float up and down is a more apt description and rotate around in a circle where it's sitting. We'll need the update function, but we won't need start. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to add a couple of your favorite things, serialized fields. So let's add a serialized field, private, float, rotate speed, and we'll set that equal to 50. 50 is a good default for that. Then we're going to say serialized field, private, float, float amplitude, 2.0F. And we could get away with just calling it like float amp or even just amp. But I, I try to be as descriptive as possible with my variables. So let's create this new serialized private serialized field, private float, float frequency. And by default, we'll set that to 0.5F. And then we need a private vector three start pause or start position. And I actually lied. We are going to need the start function. So let's put that back in. And we're just going to say start pause equals transform dot position. So whatever game object this is attached to, it's going to grab that transform dot position and hold on to it so it can remember the point of origin for the math we're about to do. Let's go down into the void update function. And we're going to say transform dot rotate vector three dot up rotate speed times time dot delta time. So we're rotating around vector three's up axis, which is zero one zero. So just on the y axis. And we're rotating at whatever speed we define times time dot delta time. Next we're going to add a new vector three temp pause and grab the start position. So we just want a copy of this starting position as a reference. And now we're going to say temp pause dot y plus equals math f dot sign. And then we're going to pass in time dot fixed time times math f dot pi times float frequency. And then we're going to multiply that whole mouthful by float amplitude. Perfect. If you're unfamiliar with math f dot sign, basically we're doing some math to figure out where this should be hanging out in terms of the y position going up and down in little waveforms. And then all we're going to do is say transform dot position equals temp pause. Let's save that and go take a look at it. Head back to Unity. And we're going to drag this float and rotate onto our point of interest XP bonus or POI XP bonus. So just drag it on there. Perfect. And just to show you why I messed with these variables, well, I guess let's start it and then I'll show you. Now our XP is bouncing up and down like this, as you can see. And it's rotating around while it does that. 
let's mess, mess with these just a little bit to show you why I did 2 and 0.5. Most people like to keep the amplitude around one, but I just felt like it didn't have the same effect. Oh, <laughs> I know why it's not changing for us. There we go. And this is a cool script that you can use for a lot of objects, not just this little floating XP text, but it's pretty universally applicable. So anything like this with a bonus, you can use this script for and make it look alive. Awesome. We'll stop running. Okay. Now that we've figured out what prefab we're going to use, let's delete this from our scene because we don't really want it hanging out on top of the player to start with. And let's add one more script. Let's right click on the POI XP bonus folder. And we're going to say create C sharp script. And I'm just going to name this XP bonus. And for now, we'll leave this just in this POI XP bonus, but you could use it in other places. And I'm just going to click on the POI XP bonus prefab and drag this XP bonus script onto it. Oh, hey, we need to rename this. There should not be a space in between XP and bonus. Now that our script just says XP bonus, let's left click on the POI XP bonus and drag that script onto this object. And then we'll double click the XP bonus script to open it in our IDE. Now this script is super simple, super easy to do. We're just going to say, we're going to remove both the start and update functions. And then we're going to say serialize field space private int bonus. And we're going to set that to 10 by default. And then we just want to say private void on mouse down. There we go. And inside of here, we want to say game manager dot instance dot current player dot add XP and then pass in the bonus. And then we want to destroy this game object so that the player can't use it again. See how this game manager is still coming in handy? Let's save that and then reopen Unity. And now when we click on this bonus, our player should be getting XP. So just to check that, let's run the project. Let's drag an XP uh, POI XP bonus prefab onto the scene. And then we'll click it. Oh, it's not doing anything because we failed to do one thing. Stop running the project, click on the POI XP bonus, and it's going to need a collider for it to detect our clicks. So let's just add a box collider real quick. And we'll drag an instance onto the scene so we can set up this collider properly. And we're just going to increase the size in Z so that it's easily clickable. And maybe widen it out a little bit. So let's set this to 14 on the X axis, a good solid 12 on the Y axis, and we'll go with three on the Z axis. Done deal. And then we'll apply these changes. And now if we run play and click on this XP, it should work. Boom. How cool is this? Now our player has 10 experience. They've gained experience, and it's holding on to our player object. And the prefab destroyed itself. Perfect. That's exactly what we were going for. So let's destroy this prefab, get it off our scene. Now that we have that prefab in working order and all set up, complete with the scripts that we need to make it look good and work well, let's go ahead and call this video good. Our next step 
is going to be getting these to populate at our points of interest so that we can entice our players to go out and do something and actually enjoy the game. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.